Super Mario Bros. 3 touched millions of lives. More than 18 million, if you go by sales numbers. For an entire generation, Super Mario Bros. 3 is the game we played in the orthodontist's office, about incessantly on the playground, and the game we stayed up all night to beat at a sleepover. Super Mario Bros. 3 is a touchstone of shared cultural nostalgia, an artifact from a key moment in Nintendo history, a symbol of the golden age of Mario, and one of the most intensely hyped video games of all time. Today's game developers and scholars grew up on Super Mario Bros. 3, the title where Mario proved he was here to stay. And for me, it was the game that brought me closer to my father and my brother, and the game that gave me an outlet to explore my gender and sexuality. Hello, my name is Elise Noor, and I'm an associate professor of English at Regis University, and the author of Super Mario Bros. 3 from Boss Fight Books. Today, I'll be talking about what Super Mario Bros. 3 means to me. One of my earliest and most cherished memories is sitting in the den with my dad, holding an NES controller far too big for my four-year-old hands, navigating Mario around the screen of Mario 3's level 1-1. I remember my dad patiently explaining to me how to jump and run and which boxes to bump. I remember the thrill and pride when, after a few tries, I nabbed my very first mushroom. When we weren't playing Mario 3 together, I would watch my dad play, regardless of whether I was supposed to be in bed. I would sit on the floor beside his wicker rocking chair and watch as he battled through Mario 3's wooden airships, with all their cannonballs and bullet bills shooting across the screen. My dad's addiction to the game, he told me recently, came from the urge to advance to further levels and worlds, and to stick it to Mario's nemesis Bowser, who my dad passionately hated. When I got older, Mario 3 brought my little brother David and I closer together. As I hopped, hammered, and tail-flapped my way through Mario 3 for the umpteenth time at around age 9 or 10, I decided to take on the role of teaching David, four years younger than me, how to play. I felt pride when he beat levels and power when showing him how to handle moves I had already mastered. At some point, though, I realized that teaching David to play meant there was less time for me to play. And so I tricked my brother into watching me play Mario 3 by convincing him that watching me play was far more interesting than playing it himself. Over time, I got used to having an audience as I traversed through the various worlds again and again. It felt like I was performing. I had a co-conspirator who would cheer when I beat a level, ooh and ah when I pilled off an especially adept move, gasp when I came close to dying, and heave a sigh of relief when I miraculously eluded an enemy. Eventually, having David's support became more important to me than my initial goal of hogging the controller. When we overheard our parents' arguments during their divorce, David took their anger to heart. He was a sensitive little kid, and sometimes he would run into his bedroom and throw himself onto the bottom bunk of his bunk bed, crying. I understood it was my job as the big sister to take charge and comfort him, to try and play the hero. But David wasn't much of a talker, and neither of us had the words to discuss what was going on around us. So we played video games instead. We escaped to the room with the console, shut the door, immersed ourselves in the world of Mario 3, and talked about that. And it worked. Millions of other children had similar experiences with Mario 3, which brought them closer with their own family members and provided solace through their own difficult times. Mario 3, which debuted in 1988, represents Nintendo at the peak of its reign over the American game market, a golden age of Mario. 
And so Mario 3 touched the lives of an entire generation born between 1975 and 1990. If Super Mario Bros. 1 defined the platform genre, Super Mario Bros. 3 perfected it. Through its perfect storm of pure quality, ideal timing, and an incredible marketing blitz, Mario 3 had a lasting influence on future platformers and Mario games, leaving behind a legacy of revolutionary concepts. This timeless classic was one of the last games from an era when levels were still drawn by hand before being programmed. The hand-drawn aesthetic shows in the careful attention paid to artistic detail and variety. Inhabiting Mario 3's bright worlds are some of the quirkiest enemies of any Mario game, like booze and chain chops, and of course, the network of sibling bosses known as the Koopalings. Of course, the game's objective remained the same as any Mario game. Mario, the Brooklyn-based plumber, must save the princess from Bowser and his evil minions. Mario 3's whimsical, fairy tale like aesthetic is reflected not only in its objective in art, but also in its incredibly catchy tunes, which remain stuck in many gamers' heads to this day. But this isn't just a quirky and adorable game, it's also an utterly addicting one, which is the main way I'd sell it to a new player. Through its reward system, inventory of power-ups, and approachable learning curve, Mario 3 keeps the fun coming every time you play it, perfectly tapping into the flow state of challenge so that it's always feeling new. This is a game that's very hard to put down once you start. Another reason Mario 3 feels so good to play is because it perfectly incorporates all the ingredients of excellent game feel, an intuitive term that's easier to experience than to define. Essentially, game feel is the sensation of moving a character around a digital space. Great game feel makes a game fun because it puts players in control and immerses them in the experience, with predictable, responsive mechanics they can steadily improve upon until they're experts. Mario 3's responsive controls and detail-oriented, precise gameplay are still praised today just as much as they were at the time of the game's release. In addition to its outstanding game feel, Mario 3's level design is superb. Every block, power-up, and enemy is meticulously placed to create challenges that, with enough practice, are always surmountable. Subtly and intuitively, Mario 3's levels teach you how to play and how to improve through the game alone. No tutorial, manual, or in-game text are ever necessary. When it comes to game mechanics, instead of text, Mario 3 dialogues with players through the gaming experience itself the world map, toolbar, and p-meter feedback. In a contemporary gaming world chock full of text-based instructions, Mario 3 is a breath of fresh air, empowering players and imbuing the game itself with a sense of mystery. Mario 3's levels, which were inspired by theme parks including Disney World, featured gloomy caves, snowy mountain peaks, sticky sewers, islands of giants, and heavens full of coins. Players plunged into flooded fortresses and climbed up castles to the sky, poked around ancient pyramid ruins, and sprinted across oppressive desert wastelands patrolled by a furious sun. Although it's a platformer and not an open-world-style game, Mario 3 is essentially a game of slow, methodical exploration and secret-finding. And let me tell you, the game features a seemingly endless number of secrets. Secret items, secret shortcuts, secret ghost treasure ships, secret bonus rooms, secret coin heavens, secret areas within levels, secret warp whistles, secret map screen areas, secret easter egg references from the game's creators, secret inside jokes, and so much more. Perhaps nothing testifies better to the vast number of secrets in Mario 3 than all the different access points to those secrets. Hidden pink music boxes, vines, pipes, and pea switches not to mention platforms in the sky and quicksand. Every Mario 3 lover remembers the wonder they felt the first time they fell through a white platform and landed behind the world, or the first time they found that game-changing invisible one-up at the top of the stairs in Bowser's castle. One of the great joys of Mario 3 is that once you find a secret, you never forget it.
Of course, when I was a child playing this game, I had a big secret of my own. I was gay. As a young girl, the attractions I had for other girls felt monstrous and dangerous, and when I was aware of crushes I had on girls, I saw myself as a lumbering, Bowser-like freak. I feared what would happen if I didn't keep my desires under tight control. I didn't know what they meant, and I wouldn't try to find out for a long, long time. Instead, I put on a mask inside the safe world of games. I vicariously experienced the non-threatening platonic love between Mario and Princess Toadstool. The most romance there ever is between the two is a kiss on Mario's nose or a chaste cake baked by the princess to thank him. This always implied, never quite fulfilled romance is what captivated me most about Mario 3. In a game, we're capable of actions impossible in real life, whether that's turning into a frog or rescuing or even desiring a princess. Games create possible worlds, and this is exactly how I used Mario 3 as a young girl who liked girls. It was utterly thrilling to be able to chase the lady of my dreams, even if I had to do so from inside the virtual costume of a short, mustachioed Brooklyn plumber. As I have changed and aged, Mario 3 has been a constant. No matter how long I go between play sessions, each time I return to it, it's still exactly the way I remember it. And the only thing that's different now is me. Nostalgia is a bittersweet longing to return to a happier time or place. It's a bittersweet feeling because you can't actually return. But through games, you can. Games don't change, and because of their timelessness, they offer a chance to actually return to a virtual place from your past and replay that past. I don't play with action figures with David or throw the football in the backyard with my dad anymore, but I do still play Super Mario Bros. 3. I can still experience that old feeling of connectedness I have with my brother and my father anytime I want. And that's what Super Mario Bros. 3 means to me.